Good morning, y'all, and happy Thursday. Um, hopefully, you guys are staying warm on this chilly day. Oh my, a chilly week. Oh my gosh, the snow's crazy for Houston, right? Okay, well, today we are so excited. We are going to make for you guys um, chicken pot pie. It's something that's a favorite here, especially when it's cold, and that is something that's needed if you're in the Houston area, or even Texas or all the southern states. Hello, Lee, good morning. Um, so, all right, well, we're gonna go ahead and get started, but surprise, because of the cold weather, we have a guest this morning, so you're gonna come on. Ta-da! Good morning, everyone. So good to see you. Many of you I know, my name is Dr. Kala Hewlett, founder of the Back Pain and Sciatica Center of Texas. This is my lovely wife, Tara, uh, who you've been watching for the past couple months as she's been sharing some of the low inflammation recipes that we've utilized here in our house. Um, Tara, you wanna go back and how we even started on this journey. It really, it's been several years that we've been eating healthy, just part of who we are and what we do. But I'd say it was almost a year ago that we really started getting serious. Yeah, like um, Colin just said. So we have always, eating healthy, just being more holistic. It's just who we are and what we, our lifestyle has always been. But about a year ago, um, a little over a year ago, we kind of got intrigued with the low inflammation diet. And so we started implementing that more and more um, it, as a lifestyle. So we've cut out, um, let's see, dairy, sugar, and any glutens. So we stick to, instead of a flour, like a whole wheat flour or a white flour, we do like an almond flour. So these things do not spike your insulin and they help you to heal faster. That's probably more of your category to talk about, the yep. healing process, because I always tell you guys, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a cook. Um, I'm a mom who feeds her family. <laughs> like so many people that I've talked to when COVID hit, we got what we call the COVID-10, which means we were baking and cooking and all sorts of good things. I'd come home and the counter would be full of cookies, brownies, and all these other delicious things. So of course, if they're on the counter and I walk by, I would eat them. <laughs> and so about 10, 15 pounds later, I was like, Tara, hey, we really, this is getting out of control. We need to do something. So we have what's called a Trust Your Gut program. Now we typically utilize this for patients that have hormonal imbalances, um, inflammatory conditions, and it's about a 90 day program that really cleans up the diet um, for those that have inflammation, think of inflammation like a fire, right? If there's a fire, the first step you have to do is put out the fire. You have to extinguish it. After that, you have to seal. So if there's any uh, damage in the area, you want to seal it off. So no fire, no additional flames um, get to that area. And the last one is you want to rebuild it or heal it. And so with this program called Trust Your Gut is all about healing the gut by putting out the inflammation, extinguishing it, sealing the gut, and then rebuilding the gut over a 90 day period. And so like all great things, I was like, Tara, we're doing the Trust Your Gut program. She's like, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? And, uh, but she was totally on board. And so after 90 days of being really, really committed to it. And by the way, during this 90 day period, we traveled out of town. I went on a um, week long canoe trip with my son to the Ozarks uh, on a river canoe trip and still was able to maintain a good low inflammation diet. So. If you guys ever have any questions about how do I travel and eat, I'm going camping or other modifications, please just reach out to us, let us know. We, we've we been there, we've done it, and we've learned how to make it work no matter where we're at. So anyways, that's a little bit about how and why we started doing these low inflammation recipes. Also, for those of us that are patients in our clinic, some of the newer patients may recognize Dr. Gabby or Lonnie more than myself, uh, but no matter who of us you see, all of our patients we put on a low inflammation diet when they come. The reason we do that is we know that inflammation contributes to the pain cycle. So if someone has, whether it's joint pain, knee, shoulder, hip, back pain, neuropathy, or any other type of pain symptom condition, we know inflammation contributes and just makes those things worse. So we put our patients on a low inflammation diet. So as we're working on healing them, unpinching nerves, uh, repairing joints, cartilage, uh, repairing damaged nerves, if it's neuropathy, all that, what you eat is gonna have a significant impact in that healing process. So that's another reason that we wanted to start giving you great recipes and ideas. So Tara, let's get right. cooking for today. Yes, and if you have questions, you guys can ask the questions as we're going. All right, yep. so we're gonna start oh, with our bacon. So we don't do pork in the house, so we switched um, when we started this. So we started, like I said, about a year ago being intrigued with it and slowly doing it, but then full 10 months. 
that you've added to it. So here we go. So we have our turkey bacon and um, this Applegate's a pretty good clean one. It's got no antibiotics or anything. So like I said, um, always just slowly, like wherever you are is great and as you get better. All right, you wanna turn hey, on where'd the you, Where'd you get this one? Where do we buy this? Oh, let me turn on that pan, please. No. Okay, so um, just say your local, your grocery store, H-E-B, Kroger's, if you're a local, um, I don't know if Walmart sells this. They all have some turkey bacon, so the cleaner the version, the better. Okay. And it's good. I see Jamie on there. Tell Clint it tastes good. Make it for him. He might not even tell the difference. You know, my kids have actually come to prefer this better, so that's good. I think because sometimes the bacon has, like uh, pork bacon, traditional bacon, has too much fat and they don't like that. But, uh, here we go. So, oh, actually, I'm just going to cut it up. Uh, you want to do that? Sure. Right, how, small, how small a piece? Um, Ooh, oh, you're, you're dripping juice. Um, here, let me, let me show them real quick. And then I'll wash my hands. There you go. Okay, you got that? Okay, so I'm just gonna slight cut it in like dices like this big. I don't know, is that like a half an inch? Sure. Okay, throw that in there. All right, let me rinse my hands since I touched that. Okay. So while he's getting that going, we're gonna do some garlic. And if you've watched before, you know I'm not a huge fan of a mincer. I like to kinda like slice mine up and dice it myself. But if you love a mincer, and that is, that's so much, I don't know why, but that is faster and better. So if that's what you do, do it that way. So are you guys staying nice and warm? Hopefully everybody has their power and water back on. What a adventurous, let's go with adventurous, right? Week. Who is this? Hello, Drew, how are you? You guys comment below too, like what was the funnest thing you did this week? Like for example, Monday when it started, the, you know, the big snow day, um, there's a hill just down the road from our house. So we took the pool inflatable tubes and uh, we took the kids down there. And yes, I know for those of you that from Colorado, it's really not a big mountain, but for us native Texans, <laughs> it, was it, it was huge. <laughs> and so we went sledding uh, just down the street in the neighborhood and that was super fun. Um, snowball fights, the kids invited all their friends in the neighborhood over and had snowball so, fights for a couple days. What's funny is those tubes, the kids, I think Paula took uh, Gigi, our youngest down at first, and then the kids came with their friends and then all of a sudden they were all down there and then they popped all the tubes going down there. I mean, they, they got the big fat like avocado one and then that popped like everything was popping, but they had, they had fun. So that's what yeah. happened. So right? comment below, tell us what fun adventures you did this week with Snow Week. Okay. Let's get this early. Alright, so just garlic like this. You hangman and other cool games inside the house. Oh good, I'm glad. That is so fun. Good memories, right? The kids have literally, I mean, they built like a little outdoor igloo. I was pretty impressed with that for their snowball fight. It was really cute. Okay, so we're gonna throw our garlic. That was um three cloves of good medium sized gar uh, cloves. So if you have little bitty ones, you know how they're different sizes, then do like five. Okay. And now we're gonna have our onion. This is a little bit bigger. I told you guys if I have a big onion, it's because my kids pick it out. They love to get the biggest onion possible at the grocery store. They think it's so funny. And sometimes I'm like, that's, that's too much onion. So just, a, a normal medium size onion, not teeny tiny, not extra extra right, I see someone else playing charades, hangman, other cool game inside the house. Yes, games inside the house where it's warm. Oh my goodness, so my kids love, that's the game we play, charades. Charades, I don't know somehow. So growing up, I remember playing charades with my family. I don't, maybe we played it a lot, but I do remember playing it and we'd have these little cardboard pieces that we have like oh, a yeah? picture on. Huh. Um, so when the kids were younger, it was like an easy game where, but we never had, Things they would draw, it would just be themed like, hey, charades, but today is going to be Disney themed. Or it's going to be, 
um, some other type of theme. And it kind of is the theme of whatever they're into. Yeah. So for a while, it was Star Wars, like non stop. Yeah. But if, if we're sitting around, it's like, hey guys, let's have a game tonight. One of the kids will be like, let's do charades. Um, so that, that's kind of our thing. Bonnie, oh my goodness, are you guys still without power or are you guys <gasps> back on? Oh no. Lots of blankets, candles, card games. Right? Good. Hopefully you guys get power back on. I know most of Montgomery County's back on, but there's still some pockets without power. Okay, so we're just gonna dice up this onion and we'll add that to the pan with the um, garlic and the turkey bacon. And what temperature do you want this on? Uh, medium, uh, medium high. I kinda like to cook everything a little bit higher because I'm impatient and in my mind, it goes, it's kind of like, okay, so I don't know if you guys do this. You, you could be on Team Paula here. When we get in the car, I crank up the heat. Like if it's freezing, I'm like, oh, we need it at like the highest temperature. And Paula's like, it's not going to cool it down any faster. I kind of cook the same way where I'm like, let's cook it yeah. up a little bit. It's like bit. if we're at a hotel, you know, <laughs> she'll hit the button four times, even though it's already lit up. I'm like, sweetie, it's already lit, but it's all good. We all, we all do those unique, silly things that... So, I cook it more medium high than just medium, but medium is what you would want. Hello, Peggy, how are you today? Staying warm, having a great day. It's a, it's a better day out, right? It's a little muggy, but, or overcast. Okay, so we're gonna get those cooking. And so we're just gonna cook it until the onions are, you want them like that, was it translucent? So kind of like clearish and not so white. So let's give that a minute. And I love chicken pot pie when it's cold outside. It's warming, it's fulfilling. Um, one of the challenges that we had in trying to figure out a great recipe was how do we make the bread? Because I love the bread and the crust. Uh, and so Tara was able to get that figured out a while back. So I absolutely love it. Um, it's still low inflammation, it's good, fulfilling and so forth. All right, so uh, that's started. Let's go ahead and um, do you want to start cutting these? So we're just going to do carrots. now. If you have a whole carrot, that's great. I just always happen to have these little mini carrots in the fridge and I always buy the organic just so the kids can snack on them and eat them. So go ahead and take these out. And you're gonna need, um, if you have, I would do two full carrots, like big carrots, and if not, let's take a look. Oh my goodness, Bonnie said it's still snowing. That's in San Antonio? Oh my god. Oh, is that where you're at right now? That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Um, Between the snow and the ice, we realize we definitely love the snow a lot better. It's a lot funner <laughs> to play in. Ice is not very fun to play in or drive in. Let's say like 10 to 12 of these little mini ones. Okay. okay. Kind of so, um, let's, let me, I got an angle so then you guys can see here. So we're just going to slice them first and then kind of dice them, but not two, because you don't want a huge carrot bite in your mouth. Um, at least I don't. So, you know, something like, let me pick up the board. It's easier for you guys to see without the carrots falling. Something like that. Okay. Um, I don't know. What, what, what size is that called? If you could see here. Let me just put it in the hand there. Just little sizes like that. All right. So. And I'll try to do this without cutting my finger off. Oh my gosh. Now, I, this is chicken pot pie, but I don't see any chicken out, sweetie. It, it, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. I just want to make sure. Okay, so here we are. This is what your pan's gonna look like inside with your bacon and your garlic and your onions. So now we can throw in the rest of it. So here's our chicken. And I just, this is just from our HEB. You can get um, whatever grocery store. I try to get um, anything organic and natural as possible. And so that's what this is. And so this is, let's see, like uh, two pounds. Two pounds of chicken. So I'm going to cut it and dice it in there just with my scissors. Not so, I'm not gonna use a knife for that. Okay, so if you guys have any questions like about the low inflammation diet, today's the up. day to ask since. Irene, thanks for joining us there. Welcome, welcome. Okay, and I'm gonna cut these about like an inch thick. Okay, as you're cutting that, I'm gonna show you guys this. Check this out. These are oh my chocolate chip banana bread muffins. Chocolate chip banana bread muffins. 
we went as those of you in the clinic know we usually have fresh fruit there and so when the roads cleared up uh, Tuesday we drove up to the clinic and we had a handful of bananas there and we didn't want them to go bad so we brought them home and made banana nut bread with chocolate chips now not normal and this is gluten-free right sweetie uh, yes, it's the same thing, gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free. Now, remember, I say dairy-free. I do allow butter because I love butter. In, at the beginning of the 90 days, we didn't do butter um, and eliminated it, and then you slowly see how your body can handle things, and butter, we didn't react, so we kept butter. So when I say dairy-free, I mean everything but butter because but they're super good. Awesome. And then which chocolate chips did you use? Were these the Lacanta or something else? Uh, those chocolate chips, I think, are, oh, you know what? Those are Baked Believe. So, Baked Believe is our favorite that you get at Walmart. You can only buy them at Walmart. I haven't seen them anywhere else. But Lily's is good, too. Yeah. But so, it's chocolate, but it's sugar-free, so it's natural, right? Uh-huh, yep. Natural, yep. naturally sweetened, but it tastes pretty good. So, we made muffins, we made a loaf, and we've munched on it over the last day. So, have you done this on a show yet? Nope. All right. In a week ahead, we'll do this uh, chocolate chip banana nut bread. Oh, this uh, is starting to smell so good. Oh my gosh. All right, are those carrots almost ready? Yeah? They, some of them are ready. Oh, my hands don't quite cut as fast as yours. But we're getting there, we're getting there. All right, welcome Marianne. Welcome Dr. Caldwell. Good to see everybody hopping in again. Hope everybody's staying safe and warm and okay. power's back on today for everyone. Let me get this stir. And so, I mentioned we started doing this. I say we. Uh, I'm gonna switch over. But really, Tara started doing this uh, at the end of last year, just so we could teach our patients some healthy recipes, how to cook them at home, how to prepare them. So, so she does this. If this is your first time joining us, every Thursday at nine o'clock. Yeah, we were a little late this morning getting on, but nine, yes. Every Thursday, nine o'clock, Kara's on here, live from our home. This is our real kitchen. This is not a studio, like, this is for real. Um, but uh, sharing something, and all the recipes that we utilize, they're what I call, they pass the kid test. So we were gonna do something different, but Tara's like, I haven't made it yet. I don't know if it's good. I can't do something if it's not good. <laughs> so just know that everything that you see on here has passed the kid test, meaning we have four kids, teenagers and below, and everything that we make, they enjoy and they eat as well. If they don't enjoy it and they don't think it's good, we're not gonna share it with you guys. So, kid test, kid approved, as they say. It's so true. So yeah, a lot of these we started because I, we both love food. I mean, who doesn't, right? But I can't just eat like a salad every day and be like, oh, well, that's it. So I need real food and I need it to taste like real food. So. Before you go further, the butter too, because you mentioned We're not that. We're there yet, though. But yeah. Oh, because you mentioned the butter with the, uh, yes, with the banana. Yeah. So this is the butter we utilize. Let me zoom in there. It's the Kerrygold. Kerrygold pure Irish butter, right? Which is milk from Irish grass-fed cows. Can you get this at H E B in most grocery stores? But this is. Oh okay, yeah, everyone carries this it. This is a healthier butter. And it's so good. So we started. We switched over to that. Actually, I had a friend who's a chef, April. Um, yep, shout out to Chef April, if any of you know her in the area. She's amazing. So she came and really helped us, um, oh gosh, like in January last year. And um, was teaching us some things. And she told me to switch, yeah, that to that butter because um, it was a better alternative. And let me tell you, my kids love it and gobble. Like they will lather their toast with that. Okay. So here's our carrots all chopped up. And we're just going to toss that in there. Can you put the chicken in there? Yes, that's what I was cutting over there. Oh, I didn't even see that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, yes, it's in. It's hearty, right? So I like the bacon. I like the uh, chicken. Lee, I like her new co-star as well, Lee. I appreciate that. <laughs> Lee, I, I hope you and your mom are doing well and staying warm, buddy. Please tell her I said hello. You can't make them have a bigger head, Lee. Goodness <laughs> gracious. Okay, so here we go. We got our... I'll just put the top on or no? Nope, not yet. Okay, so now we're going to add... Um, you want to get a pillar? I forgot to get a pillar out. Yep. Um, turnips. Turnips are next. So, because we're low inflammation, I'm glad you're good, Lee. Um, we do not um, do potatoes, white potatoes. So, yep. So, we're going to do turnips instead. I discovered through this that turnips are going to have the same, um, like, 
what do you say? Like consistency? Yeah, consistency. Um, density. Uh, yeah, as a potato would. And so that is what's great. You can hear the kids starting to walk inside from the snow. They're, they have been like loving, loving it, I guess. Um, all right. Do um, you want to grab another one? Yeah. I peel too slow. <laughs> All right, so just cut off the top and bottom, and then we're just going to peel that. And I'm going to do four of these turnips. Is this one? Uh, that's a different one. Um, we got an all-black handle one, too. So this is what I have. It always makes me, I think I told you guys once, we got when we were in Hawaii. So Kala's family is from, or his dad's from Hawaii, and we went a couple years back to go visit. And Somehow we stumbled upon this little market and they were selling these and they're actually really good. Don't know where it's at. Oh, okay. Here, finish killing. She's gonna find it right away. So I'm more of a helper. <laughs> um, oh, you found it. How'd you find it? Because it was right there. Oh, because the snake would have bit me, right? Oh my goodness. That's, that's why he's the assistant. All right, so just go ahead and peel. You have to yeah, so what are some of the things you're doing with turnips as you start talking? Um, okay, so turnips. So, you can you can cut. okay. Um, so let's go ahead. We're going to, same thing, dice these up just like you would with a potato into little cubes, you know, like, um, you know, you don't, I just don't, I definitely want something that's going to be bite sized, not huge. That, that's all you're getting. So, uh, half an inch. Or less. I'll show you. So I slice it and then I'm dicing them. Alright, is that good? Oh, we got one more. Okay. Okay, so something like this size is what you're gonna go with. Okay, so the turnips. So what have we used? Um we done mashed potatoes? We have done mashed potatoes. So for our potatoes we either do cauliflower or turnip. Oh last night we had steak with cauliflower rice. No, cauliflower oh, oh. mashed potatoes it was totally good with Brussels sprouts and mushrooms. Yes, sauteed mushrooms. I love mushrooms. So, um, and we've done a couple weeks back. Um, I wanted a uh, baked potato soup, so we did this instead because I love potatoes, baked potato soup. That, that was really good. I remember that. So, here we go. Yeah, so we just got into turn employment. It seems like in the last four months. Yep, I actually, um, over the fall, is when I was um, wanting to make chicken noodles, uh, chicken, what is this? Chicken pot chicken pie, pot my pie. mind went blank. And um, and I was like, oh, but we don't have, and so I was, gotta love Google, right? They have all the answers. Um, and somehow stumbled upon turnips, and I was like, well, let's give that a shot. And I'm always like, okay, I always tell the kids and call them, like, how'd that taste? What do you think? Did you, what do you think that was? And then they're like, I don't know. And I'm like, it was a turnip. And they're like, oh, well, that was pretty good. Call always laughs because I always tell people, what do you think? How did it taste? Did it taste normal? Did it taste real? And he's like, don't even ask him. Like, you gotta <laughs> stop telling people ahead of time. You tell them afterward. You just feed them. And they're like, it's like, oh, that's good. And I tell her, hey, don't tell the kids either. The way, the real test is if our kids, again, we have teenagers, if the kids go back for seconds, it was good. Right. And remember, I told y'all last week with the lasagna, they went back for like thirds and fourths. They like because we've trained the kids. Look, mom, mom works really hard on making dinner, so whatever it is, you, <laughs> you say thank it. you. It tastes great, <laughs> right? So we can't always go by what they say because always say thank you. It tastes great, mom. So just wait until they go back for seconds, and if they eat it for leftovers for lunch, that's the real test. Oh, I just jumped also, um, for those okay. y'all that are currently patients, Carol, hey, welcome. Oh, for those of you, oh, pause excuse. for a sec. All right, here are our, our turnips all diced up. So we're gonna throw those into the pot and get those started to get. Perfect. So hey, it's Thursday, right, of snow week. We'll be back Monday, normal hours. Um, I know the roadways are a little bit clear today, but we decided just out of an uh, abundance of caution and safety, we don't want anybody to be on the roadways. Some of our staff didn't have power for an extended period of time, but again, we shut down the clinic for this week. We will be back Monday, ready to rock and roll with normal hours. Um, we are checking messages as well. So if you want, you can call the clinic. It's gonna go to our answering service, but leave a message. And Amy is checking messages periodically throughout every day. And uh, in fact, they're gonna be in the office tomorrow afternoon making some phone calls as well. So just wanna give you an update there. All right, what are you going to do now? Now we're going to do some mushrooms. So, you can turn that water off so you can hear me. Okay, so for mushrooms, the correct way to clean a 
mushroom is, and I don't know how or why, but is to take your mushroom and you wipe it with a wet towel. But I'm kind of impatient for that. So I just rinse them under the sink. I, they say something that affects the cooking if you do that. Like I said, I'm a mom, not a chef. So it works, right? Okay, so um, like I said earlier, when Paula said we had mushrooms for dinner last night, I love mushrooms. So we're just gonna cut, you don't need to cut the whole stem, just the very tip of it, because it kind of gets like hard and dry there. And then we're just gonna slice those mushrooms up. She's so much faster better than I am at this. Um, I think that goes back to you just, you know, what you do every day. Um, then the other they're thinking right, they're thinking, okay, this all sounds good, but how are we gonna make a gluten-free crust or bread substance? Because to me, that's the favorite part of chicken pot pie. Otherwise, it's just like a stew or soup, which is good, but the chicken pot pie, it's the crust that makes it so good. All right, well, we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. After the commercial break, right? <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna Get these diced up. Um, you know, just you want to show them, call it, grab a handful. Finish. There's a few things. Yeah, so just a little smaller. So I don't know. Half oh my goodness, inch. Carol! Do you not have water still? <gasps> oh no! Oh. Well, I hope you guys get water turned back on soon. Daniel, welcome. Thanks for joining us as well. All right. Those of you just joining us, I'm Dr. Kala Hewitt from the Back Pain and Sciatica Center of Texas. This is my wife, Tara, and every Thursday at 9 a.m., we, I, we, I'm usually at the clinic working. Tara comes and does a low inflammation recipe of the week. We've been doing this for the past several months. Um, we started just doing it for our patients because we wanted to teach them how to eat healthier to help with their overall health and wellness. Also, those that are in pain, a low inflammation, low inflammation diet helps the healing process to accelerate. And so, we always say you are what you eat, so we want to eat healthy foods. Okay, so now we're just going to throw in our chicken stock. So this is where we have two different kinds. I'm gonna tell you, my favorite one is not the organic one. It's actually this one, it's a little bit thicker. So it is my favorite, but I do have the organic. I kind of buy a mix of them. So here's your, and you want the chicken stock because it's better than the chicken broth that's thicker. So we're gonna throw in a container of this. We're gonna, we're gonna put that in there and get those turnips and mushrooms all soft and tender here. Well, I'm actually gonna put both in because we have to make everything in big because we are a family of six and it's not just and like I, a I love little, leftovers. He does. I'm a leftover person. Um, like I would prefer for lunch tomorrow, I'm totally cool for a good dinner. I just as soon have it two times in a row. So I prefer leftovers so I can have it for lunch the next day. I am not a leftovers fan at all that much. Uh, unless it's like lasagna and enchiladas are always better the next day. So those, yes, but other than that. Um, so two containers of your chicken, chicken stock in there. Um, Cause we make so much to feed our kids and then to have, if they want seconds and whatnot. Okay, yep, I'll close that for a minute. Okay, so now, oh, no, actually no, we need to throw in some. Uh-oh, uh -oh. our broadcast got paused over on. Oh, on one side. Oh, it'll come we'll keep on. going. Okay, so we're gonna throw in some uh, thyme. Will you take that lid off? Sorry, yep. I didn't want. No, no, that the oh. pot. Okay, we're gonna throw in. This is uh, three, three. What is it called? Springs, I think they call them. Three springs at a time. Actually, I'm gonna do six springs. And then you want to get some pepper, Colin? Yep. And then we use pepper. Uh, crack it here. So we're just gonna crack it over. That's like 15 turns. A little bit of salt to taste. Uh, that's probably a half, fourth of a teaspoon. Um, okay, so we have that started. Okay, while that's going, let's get onto what Paula says is his favorite part. The video part. Oh, uh, let's grab this down here actually. Um, let me get that out. All right. Did it come back on? No. Nope. So we're going to keep rolling here. 
Okay. You want to plug that in on the yep. corner? I'll get that here. And normally one of these is made in advance, so we were not. Oh no, the broadcast went down. Okay, we're gonna keep going though. Um, um, I did not do chicken magic today, is what I like to call it. Where I make one ahead of time. I did, I did not get to that. Okay, so we're gonna put in our food processor to make the, we're making the crust. The crust. So um, we're gonna need two cups of almond flour. Can I put the lid on this? Yeah, now you can. Perfect. Two cups. All right. We use a lot of almond flour. We do. Almond flour is great because. I'm gonna see if I can get something substitute. back live. You keep going. Okay. Uh, so two cups of almond flour, a fourth a cup, and I just you can get your almond flour at any local grocery store. And you know H E B if you're in Texas area, um, is great because it's a, they you can buy it in a big old bag. Um, and now some coconut <clears> flour. <throat> um, yeah. And this is just Bob Red Smell that I happen to have here. And this is gonna be a fourth of a cup. Okay. And then I am all out of... Um, all right, I think we're back. Oh, good, yay! I am all out of uh, tapioca. I typically would use tapioca, but you can use arrowroot, and that's what I'm using here. Um, we're gonna do a cup. Let's see. I think I may have. What happened? I don't know if people can see us sideways now. <laughs> it's all good. A cup and a four. All right. My hands are all powdery now. Okay. So we're going to put that in the processor and a little bit of salt. So remember, I use this real salt. It's great salt. It's good for you. It's clean. Um, and it's got these little, let's see, there's like salt on there. These little nozzles. So see, when I shake it, it looks like a lot, but it's got like little bitty holes. So we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt in there and then um, our butter. So for this, you want your butter cold and like we said, we use this Kerrygold. Um, they have salted unsalted. This is the already salted one. So we're just gonna take our knife. Let me get the mushrooms off of that. I don't want that in our crust. Um, and just slice up your butter. All right, we're back for real now. Oh, good. Okay, so what we added to the pot real quick, I'm gonna do a refresh real quick. Six springs of thyme, um, and then cracked pepper and some salt uh, to season with. Okay, so now we're making our crust. So we added in two cups of almond flour. Uh, gosh, my mind went blank. Uh, half, a fourth a cup of coconut flour and some arrowroot. And I'm using arrowroot because I'm out of tapioca. You can go, you can intermix those two. Okay, so we got our butter. Lee, I know, the back. joys of live TV, right, Lee? Oh my goodness. Eh, it's life, these things happen. You roll with it, right? So we're just gonna cut, oh, you guys can't see, I guess, yeah. I don't see over there. And we use, like I said, I think you may have mentioned, sorry, I was fixing the camera. We used all these alternative flours because they are gluten-free for a lot of things, from pancakes to waffles, um, baking, like most things, do we use white flour for anything really anymore? No, we don't. Mm -mm. We don't use that. And it was cool is our kids have started finding recipes online because they enjoy baking as well. They get it from their mother. Um, like our son has found some really good chocolate chip cookie recipes using these alternative um, okay. flour sources. I'm going to pause you for a sec. All right, so our butter's all cubed. So we're just going to throw it and right here. I don't think it comes any further. I have a food processor. Pull all up to that food processor right there. Okay, so if you don't have a food processor, you can just use this um, in a bowl. So we're just gonna throw in our butter and then we're gonna do two eggs. Okay. So we got butter, eggs, we have alternative flours. All right, you wanna Process that. I'm gonna process it here. Okay. You just push the pulse on. On. Just. Yep. There we go. It's doing its thing. Or turn it off and mix it around. But once you get the flowers, like we had some, some of our neighbors didn't have power the other day. We didn't mix it around. I'll mix that around it. Some of our neighbors didn't have power the other day, so we had them over for a warm meal for breakfast. Um, 
with the almond flour, and some were like, hey, this actually tastes pretty good. Uh, so, it's get it in there. It's so yeah, these the alternative butter. sources actually are really good tasting. Yeah. And then once you go back, you go back to the normal flours. The normal flours just don't taste very good. You know what? I'm going to add a tad of water. It's a little bit thick right now. It's not moving around. you got to give it a minute for that butter to... You want to add, no, it's going. There you go. Give it a minute. If you have a food processor, give it a minute to start spinning. You've got to get all the dry ingredients that get stuck. Um, you're using your hands. Just get in there. If you're using your hands in a bowl, try not to work it too much because you're going to melt that butter and you don't want to melt it. That's what's nice about a food processor. Hey, but Johnny, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Yep. There we go. We didn't need to add any water. We're good. This is smelling really good over here too. So we got the crust now, this is what we're talking you about, the crust. You give me some uh, uh, saran wrap. Yes. Okay, so you're gonna want to put this into a disc, shape it into a disc with some saran wrap. Today would have been a great day for TV magic. I'm sorry, y'all. At least you'll see, so. Okay. So we're just, can you see? Oh, let me scoot down. So we're just taking it out of the food processor. Also, if you want the recipe, be sure to comment below. Like we have the recipe posted in our clinic every week. Um, if you're currently not a patient and you still want the recipe, just comment below and we'll make sure we get it to you. I'm gonna cut this in half. That's a really big disc actually. Will you get me one more piece? Absolutely. Okay, so just shape it into a disc, you know, a circle. I'm doing two chicken pot pies. Big pies. So, I you can do this, um, and you're gonna put this in the fridge for like 20 minutes or so. Sure. You got that one? So, again, like a big, like a big frisbee flattened out here. Oh. Okay, um, so it just needs to sit and kind of let that butter harden again, so then you can roll it out and then bake it. And then this becomes a pie crust, correct? That's Yes, that's the pie crust. That's the crust. And then do we use this pie crust for pies too? No, we don't. All right. Sorry, he got all excited. No. <laughs> all right, you wanna throw those in the fridge for a second? Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so now um, that is done. We're gonna put that in the fridge for 30 minutes. I wish we would have had TV magic today. That would have been beautiful for you guys. But drop your comments below or your email and we will send you the recipe right yes email I'm sorry email put email. The email below yeah. we'll email to you email below we can email you the recipe as well as we will post a picture because i didn't do tv magic today um so the pot is going to keep cooking and in there um they are going to get soft and at the very end we're just going to throw in uh because it's not quite ready we're going to throw in a uh, half a cup of peas and um, a fourth a cup of arrowroot to help thicken it up. So that's all you have left for your pot. Your dough, your crust, which is his, call his favorite, you're gonna put in the oven, preheat at 400, and then cook that. Um, I think it's like 10 minutes. And then now, this is what I do. I don't, sometimes I so put you it cook, on top of this. You cook pot. the crust separately, separately before you put the pie So Well, this is what I'm gonna get at. So usually you will, roll out your dough and you can put it, if you want to put it in little individual serving bowls and you can cover those bowls. I just roll mine out and I'll, I'll show you in a picture. I roll mine out and um, cut them into um, almost like Pop-Tart sizes, like a two by three, what is that, like two by three-ish, something like that size, and then we can dip it more. I typically do more of that way. Um, so, I think that's it. Perfect, and those of you just joining on, we had a glitch. If you're watching the Facebook Live, make sure you catch the first part of the video where we start. So today is the anti-inflammatory, low inflammation, healthy, gluten-free chicken pot pie. Yep. Um, we went over A to Z. Um, so make sure you catch the first part of the video so you get everything A to Z. And then, yeah, I think you should. This is really good. This is the uh, banana chocolate banana. banana nut bread, which is so good. 
Um, so I'm going to finish this. Okay, you do All right. that. All right, you, you guys, guys have well. a great day and stay warm, and we will see you next week on Thursday. Bye.